Hello everybody, Nancy Grace here and with me longtime friend, first, colleague, second, although that's not chronological, Cheryl McCollum. Let me give you your <laughs> official intro. I wish I could do a, a drum roll, uh, but I haven't mastered that yet. Um, Cheryl McCollum worked with me in the trenches in inner city Atlanta. Cheryl, what's your recollection about how we met, which is, of course, is totally wrong, but what is it? Oh, it was at a crime scene about 2.45 a.m., and you come flying in sideways in your sports car, and you jump out. I did not out. have a sports car. I had A, first, an old beat-up Toyota, and then B, an old beat-up <laughs> Honda Accord. I don't even know if they make those anymore. We started smoking under the hood, but I didn't have the money to get it fixed. <laughs> so if you want to call either of those a sports car, have at it. Okay, now then what happened? Well, Oh, you jump out of the car and you're like, what do you got? What do you have? What can I help you with? I would and never have said, like, what do you got? That did not come okay. out of my mouth. Okay, go ahead. This is my memory. <laughs> and Jim Burke with the GBI was standing there and I was like, what in the world is that tornado? And he went, you don't know Nate to Grace? And honey, I knew two things in that moment. I was going to get to know you. And two, I was pretty sure we were going to be buddies because I had never seen anybody come out of the ivory tower. I'd never seen a prosecutor on scene in my entire life. And I thought it was the greatest thing. And you saved our case that night because there was, we had a search warrant, but there was a detached garage. And we were about to get in that thing and start searching. And you said, hold on now. You need a, you need a second search warrant because that is detached. That is not part of that address. And, and you I know what's like, funny Her? about that? is it's called curtilage, C-U-R-T-I-L-L-A-G-E. And when you get a warrant for a home, it typically includes the curtilage. You know, the shed in the backyard, this, the playhouse, blah, blah. But some judges don't like it, so it's just better to just go ahead and get that second search warrant. You don't really need it under the U.S. Supreme Court law, but better safe than sorry, right? Because you don't want to try a case, not get the evidence in because some judge doesn't believe the rule about curtilage and lose mm -hmm. that evidence and then go up on it. I mean, because the state doesn't have the same rights of appeal. You could appeal to your blue in the face, but once there's acquittal and acquittal, it's over. Even if you win exactly. the appeal. Okay, so we agree to disagree. And now let's see, your two children and my two children, so far two husbands later, we're still friends and colleagues. So, Cheryl McCollum, can I talk to you about Gabby Petito? May mm -hmm. God rest her beautiful soul. Gabby Petito's parents have released a heartbreaking selfie that Gabby took of her bruised and beaten face just moments before that traffic stop. Remember that traffic stop? Oh, yeah. That fateful mm. traffic stop where the Utah cops did not separate them and did not identify Brian Laundrie as the aggressor, even though there had been a 911 call within the last hour, hour and 15 minutes of a yep. man fitting his description, chasing a woman basically up Main Street, wasn't it the Moonflower Cafe or the Sunflower Cafe right outside that? Beating yes, her, correct. hitting her, slapping her on the street. Hello, two yeah. plus two equals four. Okay, I want to hear your take because you and I are both pro-law enforcement. And I'm not saying there are not a few bad apples. Of course there are. But for the most part, the system, law enforcement, judges, prosecutors, crime scene analyst, crime lab scientist, medical examiner, are some of the most honorable people I've ever met. That said, I agree with Gabby's parents, but I want to hear your take. The most compelling thing for me was prior to stopping that van, they knew they had an eyewitness a man 
was hitting a woman. And the call, incidentally, came in from a man. So this is not somebody that's being over dramatic or emotional or whatever Don't they want to say. Right? Don't feed into that from a woman. theory that women I'm not are hysterical. I, th I'm th not. I'm not. I'm taking it completely off the table. This wasn't a factor, no matter what you think. This was a man saying, I'm watching a man hit and punch and slap a woman in the face. He got the tag, he got the description of the van, and they stopped that van. And there's several things that may be a more seasoned... But didn't they say they stopped the van because it was weaving? Yes, but they had a legal reason to stop the van prior to that. But this, they have two reasons now. But they get the van stopped. Nancy immediately, Gabby starts talking to them, and she says, you know, that he hit me. He gets frustrated with me a lot. How sad is that statement? And then she says, I was apologizing to him. I mean, if this is not domestic violence 101, I don't know what is. And then what does Brian say to the police? He says, oh, well, I mean, I pushed her away. So now he admits he put his hands on her. Um, she's got visible bruising on his face. He's got scratches on his face and arms. She's got marks on her arms. They don't separate them and talk to them legitimately about what exactly occurred. They don't say to them, hey, we've got an eyewitness. Brian goes on to tell them when he asks, hey, where's your cell phone? He says, I don't have a cell phone. And then later, when he's going to go to this motel so he can just chill and play video games, he says to the police officer, hey, can I go in the van and get my charger? They don't call him on any of his BS. None of it. He's calm. He's joking with her. Gabby's over there sobbing, shaken. Again, domestic violence 101. The woman will be almost inconsolable. She will have injuries. She will be shaken. She will be nervous. The man's going to be laughing and joking and calm. And One of the trying worst to things. charm police blaming the woman the Absolutely. little lady is beside yep. herself but when you yep. look at this selfie i mean she's got tears in her eyes and a bloody red bruise around her eye lawyers for the gabby petito family claim officers who responded to the incident ignored her injuries and i mean if this is a selfie right beforehand they're right and Nancy, let's ask this question, because I know the way you used to work, you know, work that courtroom, you would do this. You would say to that jury, why did Gabby take this selfie? Why did she need to document this? Why did she want this for prosperity? That's something you have to factor in. She didn't take this to send a friend. She didn't take this to post like she was doing on their trip. She wanted to document this for other reasons. And I think that's really important because what happened to her right after they got back together, he killed her. You know, when I look at this selfie, Cheryl, it makes me just want to cry. I just want to cry. Of course, I, I could know. never do that in front of a jury, but I mean, the look on her face. And of course, if it were you or I and a guy hit us, we'd be gone, or at least I think I would. Gone, gone. Take the van, mm -hmm. take whatever you want. I'm going to a payphone and I'm calling my parents collect right now and I'm going home. And you can kiss right. my ass in the Macy's window. That's it. Right on. But, you know, that's us. Or at least we think we would. We say we would. A lot of women say that and they get in domestic violence and they don't leave. So, and a lot of educated women too, a lot of smart women that, that know better up here, but for some reason they stay. And that's a whole different psychology and I'm not a shrink, but I do know that it's true. And these are not stupid women. They are not uneducated women. They're women and they stay yeah. in it. And for some reason she thought it was okay to go out into a dispersed camping area, which I've camped in many times before the twins and since. Dispersed camping means you're not gonna get a cell. You're not nope. near a payphone, you're not near a laundry, you're not near a porta potty. 
you're out there with the wolves and the animals and the snakes. That's where you are. And she thought in her mind, or maybe she was too afraid to say no, I'm not going. But she went. She marched to her death. Um, Cheryl, what do you think? And, of course, Cheryl is a crime scene expert. She is the founder and now director of the Cold Case Research Institute. She is the star of a hit podcast, and it is a hit, uh, Zone 7. But just because you haven't invited me on, I'm going to start calling it Zone 6 just to irritate <laughs> you. Or Zone 77. Uh, why is it called Zone 7? Explain. Zone 7, you know, in Atlanta, there was only six police zones. So if we were going to get together with just that inner core group of people that we love You mean and at the bonding in. company where I would go almost every day after? You know why I ended up at the bond company, bonding companies every day after court? Because I would not, well, I couldn't pay what it was a 20 something dollars a day to park right mm -hmm. beside the courthouse in the deck so i would go That's way right. way down the street where the the asphalt started <laughs> having holes in it and all that and that's where all the bonding companies were lined up correct and so i'd be but dragging all my stuff and stuff about halfway to go into the bonding company and sit down and then go back to my car <laughs> finally get to the car okay yes. zone seven right that's what we were talking but about but zone, but zone seven is not a place as much as it is a mindset and a way of working in this career and your life. So you're part of my zone seven. Renee Ronkel is part of my <laughs> zone seven. The people that I trust the most that have my back, that are going to tell me the truth, that are there to help me out. So if I had a case and I needed to talk to somebody and, and work it through before I embarrass myself. You know, okay, wait. Okay, now what are we going to do about this <laughs> selfie? Okay, but here's, let me There's tell you no about the There's no way selfie. the cops couldn't have seen it. Because the timestamp no of the selfie shows it. it was taken 437 on August 12, 2021. Minutes later, a witness calls 911 and say, to say they've seen Laundry attack Gabby in a parking lot in Moab. In the police report, they mention they saw marks on and her th face. So and this all. is taken before the 911 call. So if it looks like this before the 911 call, then mm -hmm. the cops could see it. It's gonna be Will successful. the lawsuit be successful? Yes, no. A hundred percent. Okay, when yes. you get your law degree, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll pay attention <laughs> to that. Bye, girl. Bye. <laughs>